we are even throwing this over the purple because like I said these guys are dark dingy disgusting so this whole thing's going over it and one thing with the washes is you really don't want to like especially on big areas like this if it's starting to pool up in certain areas like more than you'd like clean off your brush and move it out of that pool with your brush because if you don't it's just gonna look like a giant spot of wash basically and that's not what we're going for we're looking for something that you know it all blends together it all looks like it's part of the model so I'm gonna get all these panels in here just get a nice healthy amount of shade on it and then like I said, this guy's going to have to sit and dry for a while, so what I'm probably going to end up doing is just working on the wings for this guy while uh, the shade dries. Because by the time we're done with the wings, the shade on this guy is going to be dry. Um, so we can come back to him, finish him up, because we're going to, well, as soon as I start on the wings, we're going to work on them until they're done. Which shouldn't take too long, it's a lot of airbrush work mostly, but uh... It's a pretty easy process for painting the wings. And then the last thing we're going to do after we finish up all the detail on this guy is do his base. If you've noticed, he's standing on like this giant rock formation. So we're going to add some like texture to the stuff that's not on the rocks. And then we're going to paint the rocks themselves just with some simple gray through the airbrush. Kind of highlight the rocks. Nothing too overboard because the base we're going to go a little crazy with. Add some uh, like dark red earth to it basically and then some uh what's it's base it's called um nurgle's rot and it's basically this paint that when it dries almost looks like a green ooze like slime type snot type deal it's kind of funky but it is sweet and for this guy it's going to be the perfect kind of uh I don't know, alternation to his base basically. We don't want him to have a base that kind of matches and blends in with him. We want it to stand out and look unique. So yeah, as you can tell with this wash, very dark, grungy green, like kind of tint to it. But uh, with that, everything on him is going to be washed. Let me get this little inside piece here that I missed. this inside piece and then one last little bit just double checking for any pooling anywhere uh, and then we're gonna go back over with some other colors once this dries too and just brighten up some of those colors you know make them stand out a little bit make them unique add some airbrush effects to it um, clean up the little protrusion things here on his uh, shoulder paint the little horns on his head but um yeah so with that he is washed i know he looks really shiny right now but when he dries he's going to be matted out so we will uh leave him be and we're going to get started on the wings this out, got to put the booth back up. Alright, so the wings are going to be actually pretty straightforward, um, other than doing the moth pattern on them. Basically what we're going to be doing is going in with the Rackarth flesh color that we had earlier and just hitting all the in-between like wide spaces and then this top piece here. After that, we're gonna be going through with a red and the uh, the purple wash that I had right here. And we're gonna be taking those and hitting all the veins, doing like a nice little gradient, and then also this top piece. After that's all done, then I'm going to be doing probably like right here in the center, just big old splotch, and I'm gonna be doing some moth eyes on it. Just real simple, it looks really cool, it's really easy to do with an airbrush. Um, so that's the next thing up on the schedule, so let me get my brush together. 
Uh, thank you guys for still tuning in. I know it's a little late. Um, but, you know, give or take, I want to say, maybe an hour we'll have this guy done. Um, all the way up to basing, that is. Basing takes a while to dry, so it's something that you do last and uh, let it dry overnight. So let me uh, get this going here. So I'm going to be doing one wing at a time here. Uh, i got to run some cleaner through this real quick. Make sure I get it uh, you know, all situated properly. Uh, I want to make sure the brush is flowing correctly and with the right PSI, all that good stuff. But uh, yeah. For those of you that didn't hear earlier, um, or those of you that are just joining us now, I will be doing two videos a week. Mondays will be Gundam kits and anything Gundam related. Wednesdays are for Warhammer, and then every other Friday I will be streaming games as well, whether by myself, with some friends. It just, uh, you know, it just depends. So, but the game streams aren't going to be every Friday just because I don't have a good setup for it yet. I need to get a second mic. They will be every other Friday. All right, so let's get started on these wings. All right, so very light. Now it's okay to leave some of the brown. I mean, for all, we are basically going over the whole ring, but we do want to leave some brown in there because we are going to be doing a wash over this as well when it's done. Um, and the wash will actually be throwing through the airbrush uh, just to get it a more natural look on these wings. And then, like I said, we're going to hit this top piece here. Flip it over. As you can tell, I'm being very rough with this step. It's, there's really no need for any kind of uh, like excessive cleanliness on this step. We just want to get that general pattern onto the wing. Yeah, so whether on this video or when I upload it to YouTube, 
Um, go ahead and leave a comment on what next Warhammer you guys want me to do. Or next Warhammer model. There's a bunch out there, but I got my eyes on a couple that might be fun for this. Uh, whether it's doing like individual guys or big stompy robots. We'll just uh, have to see. But I got a couple in mind that would be pretty swanky, I'd say. Just cleaning out the brush here, getting some water through it so I can throw the shade in there. Alright, so the next thing we're do is gonna throw some shade through it. And this is just a uh, brown wash, no extra additives, nothing like that. And this is just to get some more redefined colors to it. Sorry, I got a bit of a cloud forming around me. So with this, we're basically just gonna Follow the lines that are already there with the veins. That's really it. Stepping. Pretty straightforward, just getting a little bit more of that detail line in there. Uh, it makes a nice shadow. the fan real quick so give me a second actually I'm gonna do it after this after I finish this brown up Alright, give me a second here to hook up my fan, swap colors, and then we'll be back in business. Give me a second here to figure this out. I gotta switch the plugs around. All right, I think I got it. I might have just knocked over every paintbrush I own, though. Right, 
All right, back in business. Can you guys still hear me okay? Everything going all right still? So I'm just drying off some of those pieces. Uh, next thing we're going to be doing is going in with a purple. This is Drooky Violet. Uh, looks like I'm about out of that soon, so I need to go get some. Uh, this is the purple wash from Games Workshop. And it's uh, probably one of the better colors. So with this, we're kind of just blending it into the uh, the brown that's already there and making some nice, almost like bruised effects, I'd say. I don't want to go too heavy. And then on this top part of the wing, we're just going to give it a nice little tint. All these little spots that have like holes in the wings, stuff like that. We're just gonna hit those as well. Because, you know, why not? Get a little bit more detail in there. So if you can tell now in the wing, it's got this nice like purple ish hue to it. Same thing with red after we finish purple. So when throwing a shade through the, you know, the airbrush, you really got to be careful with um, staying in one spot too long. Because if you do, it'll it'll look like you threw uh, just a full-on shade on there, not these nice gradients that we're getting. And it uh, it can kind of mess up if you've done good gradient work. It just makes it look a little sloppy or unpolished. 
you know. And like on these guys, like I said, I know they're death guard. They're supposed to be dirty. They're supposed to be, you know, grungy. But like at the same time, you know, we want it to look nice. We want it to look even. All right, so the next color we're going to be doing is same technique, but with Carabog Crimson. This is a nice red color um, from Citadel as well. So basically, we're going to be doing the same technique, except not as heavy. So we get these nice pink purplish wings when we're done. So excuse the fan, this will only take a minute. that had purple on them and then going back on this and on this we just kind of want to hit the tops bleed it into that purple a little bit we don't want to completely coat it with the uh the crimson again that will get rid of the work we've already done i'm just gonna you know pick up these nice spots make them look bruised beaten you know kind of disgusting like this guy is supposed to be Get that nice purple bruise brown wing and then after that we are ready to do our uh, our moth eyes after we finish up this wing here Those of you worried like that, oh no, he just touched the uh, part that he just painted. This, the shade through an airbrush dries so fast. Like it's almost dry as soon as it hits the, uh, the model. So I'm not too worried about touching a spot that I just cut with paint. So it's all, it's all good. So those wings are done. Uh, I just need to pull up my reference picture here of my moth wings. So give me a second here. I've also got to get the extra shade out of here. There we go. All right, give me a second here. So I'm thinking what we're gonna do is do the big black circle and then well, it looks like more of an orange brown circle do black in the center of that and then just a single white mono eye kind of do it that way so i think the color man what color do i want to do for that outer circle um i think what i'm going to do is start off with this troll slayer orange do the basis of the circle and then uh apply that brown shade i already put over it kind of tone it down a little bit do the black and then do the white mono eye so let's see how that works because this is a really bright paint and i don't have any orangish color that's duller than this so i'm just gonna try a little bit of this first get my eyes down and then, uh, go from there. So let me see what's the back here. Let me see here.
Right. I got it. I had to figure out which wing was left, which one was right. So. All right. So I think I'm going to try and go for like right in there for the moth. I actually, you know what? No, I'm going to put it towards more towards the tip of the wing, kind of like right here. So it has that like decayed look to it. good spot for our eye. I'm not going to do it on the undersides. I'm just going to do it on the back sides here. Here, next step is going to be to block out those dark black spots. So what actually I'm going to do is I am going to do the black, and then I'm going to do the brown over that because the white it needs to be like pure white. So I need to do the black next. That way, tie it all tie it all in together. Let me uh, clear this out. Let me get the black in here. For white, I think actually what I'm going to do instead of doing a pure white, kind of like a doing the idea of like an off white almost, um, just to kind of stick with the theme a little bit. But uh, we'll see how it turns out. You know, it could be could be pretty cool, could be pretty bad. But you know, hey, either way, we'll see. All right, we got that black going. And from there, I'm just gonna kind of. Yeah, I'd say that uh, it works pretty well. I'm gonna put the brown over that and we'll tie it all in. Yeah. We'll just do an extra coat of brown over it with the Agrax, and then uh, we'll do the mono eye. Let me just uh, this out a little bit before I throw the shade in it.
And sorry about the camera shake when I do that. Like I said, my phone is literally strapped to the top of my booth, giving me a top down, so. All right, so let's go and hit this with the brown. Just kind of around the outsides. Kind of tie it all in together. Just to get it all looking uniform. Is done. Get all this out of here. And then time for the little splash of white. Uh, for the white, I'm just going to go with a quick shot of Mecha Color Off White. Because this is just going to be a real quick, just single dot, leave it as is. Oh man, hold on, let me... Okay. There we go. step now that I think about it let's go back to more tearing here the shades pretty much dried but this smoke that's up near the top I'm just gonna kind of hit it lightly top down with a uh, with this off-white just to give it some color other than being just you know stark black just short quick little bursts just to get it uh, where I need to also we're gonna hit the columns down here giving them some color as well. We'll put a brown wash over them later. And then the last part we're gonna hit with this, because this is why I like off-white so much. Kind of works for a multitude of things. We're uh, gonna be hitting his scythe handle with this as well. Just to uh, do some nice little highlight color gradient to it. And then also the smoke here. And then we'll be applying a wash over these smoke parts later. Probably of the Ethonian camo shade that we used on the big guy here himself. Just to uh, give it a nice like greenish type feel. And then when we're at it, we're going to add little point highlights on the black cloak just to bring it up a little bit. Nothing, no. Two major, all the high points on this. Because actually, now that I think about it, I've got this really cool clear green paint. But, uh, would be phenomenal to throw through this. And actually, you know what? I think that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. It'll add a nice, like, neon green effect to all the smoke and everything, but it won't be overbearing. 
Uh, and that color is a glaze from Games Workshop. It's a Waywatcher green. It's very, very bright. As you can kind of see on here, it uh, it glows, to say the least. Uh, start here. And with that white that we put there, it's actually going to help create natural highlights already uh, on the model, as you can kind of see. Just multiple small coats of it, and we'll be good. Like I said, this stuff dries through an airbrush pretty quickly, so multiple small coats just hitting it, and uh, you're able to just keep going over it. And I'm also going to do a little bit on his, uh, his gun here, just because his gun fires this almost like green plasma type stuff, and that'll, uh, this will kind of help with the effect on it. And yeah, with that little bit of green, we turn that smoke from boring and bland to something pretty grand, I'd say. Works nicely with the colors. So that is actually going to be it for the airbrushing. So I'm going to go ahead and clean it out real quick. Uh, I'll be right back. And then we're going to be on to doing all the final little touch-ups and highlights finishing up the face details and uh this guy should be about done then at that point and i just got all the fine details to do so i will be right back
some water and then some cleaner through this and that'll be it for the airbrush tonight um don't want to overdo it on models if they, i i fully believe in being able to airbrush models completely but i also believe that it needs to be done in moderation if you do it too much i think it's going to look sloppy looks not refined basically almost like you uh no gradients between colors nothing like that anything that may be clogged up in the tip, anything in the reservoir, anything like that. And it's just a method of cleaning that works, it's solid, it's tried and true, you can't go wrong with it. And if you don't do it, more than likely your brush is going to clog. And trying to unclog one of these suckers is not fun. Alright, so the airbrush is done. It's time to get... Pallet back out and grab Mr. Morty. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know why I'm calling him that, his name is Mortarian. Primark of the Death Guard Legion of Chaos Space Marines for Warhammer 40,000. Um, so basically, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with that bone on his shoulder growing out of it. Uh, I'm basically just going to go back, repaint the same color, and I'll be doing that a lot with this guy, just repainting colors I've already done. In certain areas just to reestablish that color and highlight it without having to go any brighter than what it already is um, so I'm just gonna go and just get a nice thin line of this here and just avoid all the places that that shade that we put on earlier is kind of settled just to build back up that color that we established earlier and like you don't want to go too crazy with this color the whole thing again oh, again just avoid the places we already put the shade because um, if you do go crazy and overdo it you'll have to reshade it and it just won't uh, won't come out right the first time around so just take your time, avoid all those spots, and just bring that color back up to that nice uh, flatter color that we had. Like here on the back side, just avoiding all those little cracks and crevices. Just getting it nice solid color and uh, we can go lighter than this if we want on this bone color but I think for the model that it is being the character that he is uh, I'm just gonna leave it at this green because I don't want to bring it up to where it's almost like a bleached bone because they don't really have bleached bone on these guys it's all you know decayed and everything like that so before I move on to trimming the armor uh, details which is arguably gonna be the longest piece of this I am uh, gonna move on to the face and all that I'm gonna do to that guy is take some of this purple shade that we threw through earlier get a good sized amount of it and lessen that and just start getting it in there. This guy really doesn't have eyeballs. Um, I mean, he kind of does, but it gets lost kind of in his face. So I'm just going to be putting this purple on here, and then we're basically going to be doing the same thing 
we just did with the bone with the Rackarth flesh. Uh, we'll kind of be doing that for most of these colors, with the exception of being the silver. With the silver, we are actually going to go up one color brightness. Um, just to accentuate, you know, some of it's being used and worn. So I'm actually going to do that now. So the color we're going to need for that is probably one of the best paints Games Workshop's ever made. It's called dry paint. So what it is, is a paint that's more like a putty. And we can kind of see that it's this thick paste almost that you get on your brush and you just dry brush it back and forth, you know, flicking motion, just getting all the silver details. Like it picks up all the edges and everything nicely. So you don't want a lot of this on your brush. You're going to get some on there and basically wipe most of it off until you get a nice little amount on there. And then we're going to go through and just at an angle, hit all these metallic pieces. And then we're going to come back over this later with another silver paint and really hit the edge highlights. Because this one's not so, not so bright, but you know, we want one that's brighter. So I'm just going through, hitting the chain mail, hitting the chains themselves. These back parts on the tank we're going to get. And right here on his face. And also the gun we'll get a little bit of. So I'm kind of saving the armor trim last. Because like I said, it's going to take up most of the time to do. So I'll just finish up the silver here while I got it on my mind. So, and then, like I said, I'm not going to be able to show you guys the basing and everything uh, in the video. Uh, just because I'll show you how I apply it and, you know, finish up the basing and everything. But um, I will not be able to show you the finished model in this just because it'll take a lot of hours for it to dry. Like the basing material, that is. Um... So that'll be something I'll put up in the Discord. I'll put up on my Instagram. Uh, for those of you that want to follow me on Instagram, it's Hobby Master Ogle. Uh, I do projects quite often. Um, I try and put all the stuff you know that I I, uh, I do on here on there as well. But uh, it's hard to be on the upkeep on that sometimes. But I do what I can. All right, so the next color we're going to get is a bright silver, almost chrome, called Stormhost Silver. And with this, this is just going to be an edge highlight, basically. Oh, jeez. So this is going to be painted on all the edges of our metal pieces and on some of our brass pieces as well. Just as a highlight. You never really want to paint this one as a... Uh, full-on color just because it's so bright it just doesn't look right so basically what we're gonna do is just pick out pieces like along the chain here edge of these just pick out little nicks and corners and everything like that places that should look worn everything like that around the tanks we're gonna do around the cracks here the edges of these silver, I mean these brass pieces here, give them like a uh, really, really stark highlight. So this doesn't really have to be clean because like I said, it's going to be a uh, like worn type look. Like they've been using it and it's freshly been used so like the next layer of metal has been washed, like wiped away. Get those a little bit. Like I said, this guy, I'm normally cleaner on model but synthesis that this guy's death guard doesn't need to be that clean. They are all about the nasty. And then I'm kind of 
kind of just going to do some brighter highlights up on some of these brass pieces. Top of the tanks will add a little bit. And then on this piece here, on the shoulder, we'll add some. And then all this is going to be tied in in the end when we add oxidizing, rust, all that good stuff. All the, uh, the good stuff that makes Death Guard Death Guard. So thank you to the two people that have stayed in watching. You guys are awesome. Uh, I don't really know who you are. Can't really click and tell. But uh, thank you regardless. You're awesome. Alright, so next we're going to begin the armor trim process and basically we're going to be doing the same thing that we just did with the metal hitting all the raised edges any leftover pieces anything like that uh, with Krieg khaki just to give it a nice highlight like final touch up before we start doing the rust and everything all the effects that you do like rust oxidizing everything like that you want to do last you do not want to do them first because if you do them first you'll actually end up hiding the detail that you do with them. So, but uh, yeah. So with this, like I said, I'm just gonna be getting, you know, all these little edge pieces that you can hit. Now you don't have to get every single one. Just, uh, you know, do as many as you want. Get the points that you think the light would hit. It's It's a highlight, that's what it is. You're, you're highlighting the model so where you want to highlight it you highlight it it's a uh, you know it's not a dead set method that you have to do these aren't tutorials or anything this is just literally a sit and paint and talk video I mean by all means use this as a tutorial I uh, I'd be you know honored if you did but you know the general intent of these are just you know hanging out talking painting all that good stuff so yeah, I'm just hitting certain parts of the armor, just doing a general like highlight of it. Nothing too crazy, nothing too stark, just getting those nice colors. And you don't know, have to get too much, just wipe a little bit away. But yeah, uh, what have you guys been up to? Seen any good movies lately, anything like that? I went and recently saw Wreck-It Ralph with a very good friend of mine. And, uh, awesome movie, actually. I really liked it. Had some really funny parts in it. And then, uh, I went and saw Bohemian Rhapsody the other night as well. Phenomenal movie. Uh, Rami Malek did a fantastic job playing Freddie Mercury. Uh, the music was on point. The story was on point. Everything on it was just such a good movie. Uh, definitely recommend it. Definitely would say... Uh, go and see it if you haven't. Um, just overall, just a good movie. Uh, you can tell it's late because I'm rambling about things to talk about. So if this video, when you guys watch it later, when it's on YouTube or on, uh, you know, just normal Twitch, sounds like it's out of place from the other ones, because it probably is. But, you know, it's alright. We're going to get this done. I said I was going to be painting on this guy until he was done. And we are almost there. So there's no point in stopping now. So, and also on, on this guy here, he's got some of these, like, separations uh, between, like, his plate and stuff. He's got all these little pockets that kind of just hang out here. Uh, I'm going to kind of do a little couple of highlights on them. Because this paint looks really stark right now on camera. But when it dries, it'll blend in real nicely it's it, the funny thing is with these paints is like yeah it says like oh yeah it's a khaki it's really not it's more of a green color which you know I don't have a problem with at all I really don't I just uh I think it's funny that they uh like with the base coat we used in this guy it was heavy gray but like look at him he's green and like we didn't use any green paints for getting this color it's literally just the colors that he uh 
that they said like hey you know these are uh this is gray and this is green um so it's just kind of funny how you know you get these color names it's like oh yeah this is going to be a pure khaki and it comes out like this This actually isn't taking as long as I thought because uh, I forgot actually just how much of the edges of his armor are hidden up by like his hands and his plate mail and everything like that. So, alright, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on that face. And when I say work on it, I mean basically just do the same thing we just did for everything else but with the appropriate color. Which is Rakarth Flesh. And with this same thing, just picking up the high points, ignoring anywhere that a shade has settled to, and uh, yeah, just getting an overall decent coverage. Like I said, this guy's got a messed up face. Like, it's alright if we don't get it perfect. I'll be honest, painting faces on miniatures are some of the hardest things to do ever. Uh, I don't like doing it. None of my friends like doing it. Um, but you know. We have to do it sometimes. So, just a nice little overbrush of that. And then I'll probably add a red shade over the top of that to finish up his face. But he's getting close. I just got to do rest and stuff after this. And, um, and call it Gucci. So with this red, I really don't want it to be as strong as it is, so I'm going to get some water. Kind of dilute it a little bit. Um, yeah, Bumblebee looks awesome. It actually looks like it's going to be a decent Transformers movie. Not that I had a problem with any of the other ones. The first one was phenomenal, and the ones after that, kind of funky, but you know... Uh, I'm a big sucker for giant mechas and everything like that, so I'm excited for Bumblebee. Alright, so with that done, we are going to move on to rust and oxidization. So the oxidization we're going to do first because it's easier. This is literally metal oxide in a paint. So what this is, is you paint this on metal pieces, very sparingly, or you know, you could just throw it on there however you want. And when it dries, it looks like the metal has been sitting and oxidized for a long period of time. Uh, like I said, you guys really aren't gonna get to see it on this video, just cause this one is, uh, you're not gonna be able to see everything once it's dried. But on the final pictures and everything, you, I'll make sure to get every single detail for you guys. And so we're just kind of going through, picking out what spots we want to do our oxidizing. And then also, you know, we've got rust and stuff to do after this. So I'm going to get some, you know, oxidization in these pockets here. Maybe a little bit along the back side of this blade. In between these little spikes here. And like, I know this looks like really messy, but when it dries, trust me, it's going to be one of the coolest paints you've ever seen. Uh, but yeah, this is actually first Warhammer model I've painted in a while. I've been uh, busy with Gundam models. Uh, haven't really had a day off to, uh, you know, just sit and paint and everything. But uh, I'm glad now that I have a day off tomorrow. Hopefully, um, I can, you know, get some work done on these. I've got a bunch of Imperial Knights of my own that I got to paint. I uh, 
big stompy robots basically it's like what's in the uh the profile picture uh, they're pretty sweet they make this guy look like a dwarf he's so small compared to them it's 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 hilarious so that'll probably be next Wednesday's video is painting one of those I don't know if I'll paint one to completion like this guy but uh, I would definitely try I think if I got a lot of the prep work done as far as like painting the inner frame metal and stuff and then priming everything else I think I could do it um, I know that they just take a little bit longer to paint over uh, this guy, surprisingly enough. And then Monday, I gotta figure out what kit I'm gonna do for Monday. I think I may try and finish up, like, do the second part to the turn X gun. I didn't get to finish it in the first one. Um, so I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing. Uh, the Turn X Gundam is this awesome, like, giant mech suit Gundam. Which, for those of you who don't know what Gundam is, it's literally giant mech suits fighting each other. Um, phenomenal show. If you have Netflix, I recommend watching anything Gundam related on there. Um, but it's this giant Gundam robot that can split every single part of itself into different pieces and just fly around and be crazy, basically. So we're just about getting there with the oxidization. The oxidizing you don't do, you don't do too crazy of, just because you still have rust and stuff you have to do, and you don't want to overwhelm it or anything. I'm actually gonna oxidize these spikes up here on his head, and then just pat them down so they look kind of old. But, uh, yeah, doing the small detail work like this on kits generally takes the longest. Uh, sometimes priming and base coating and getting all the highlights and stuff done on certain kits. Like if you're doing more than one Imperial Knight, it takes a long time. And then you just, you feel like you don't want to do it afterwards. Like, like paint the kit to finish. You just want to just, you know, just leave it as is, come back to it later. And then it just sits there. <laughs> You know, something comes up, you have an emergency, something like that, and it happens. But, uh, I don't know, doing these is helping me find, like, a nice little creative uh, niche, I guess. All right, so there we got that oxidizing done on him. So now we're gonna do the rest. Uh, the rest is a little funky. It's a, uh, it's not a liquid paint like these ones are. High grade Banshee, huh? Which one is it? The destroy mode Banshee, or is it the uh, just the standard one? Alright, so as you're going to see, this, paste is, this paint is another one of those thick paste ones, um, like the dry brush we did earlier. So what I'm actually going to do with this is get a good sized amount of it and put it right there. And I'm going to get some thinner. Add a couple drops. We want this to be like watery with some chunks in it, but not pure water. I mean, you can do pure water, it's just harder to control. Nice, the Stray Mode Banshee's awesome. I, uh, I've got a Verica I've been meaning to work on.
So now we've got that down to a nice watery consistency. We're just going to get some on a brush there. Let me get that off the edge. And then basically the same thing. We're just going to pick out spots we want rust and put rust. Uh, mainly in this one I'm going to be focusing on the weapon area here. So, like back there on this side of the blade, just being kind of sparing, sparing in some spots with it, and other spots just going overboard. So we're going to get the rust on these pipes here just to give them kind of a dingy kind of look to them. A little bit of rust up there. And definitely some on the gun. Yeah, like normally I don't